Hey, I'm Brendan Harris, and I'm speaking about a new method we've developed for producing compact, interpretable summaries of non-stationary neural data. Non-stationarity can be thought of as a slow change in how a system is behaving at some faster timescale. For a dynamical system, you can induce non-stationarity just by varying a parameter slowly over time. In this case, we have a double pendulum, and changing the lengths of the two rods gives the time series on the right, which transitions from broad, irregular sweeps into faster, more regular oscillations. Since parameters are tightly coupled to how a system behaves, observing changes in dynamical properties gives us a direct way to infer the underlying variation in the parameters of a generative model. Non-stationarity is commonplace in neural data. An EEG signal will show distinct dynamics between different sleep stages, where a task condition might change during an fMRI recording. However, the generative model of the brain with its intricate, complex interactions between billions of neurons is nowhere near as clear or as simple as for the double pendulum. Our goal is to automatically find changes in dynamics and infer meaningful parametric variation, even when we lack an accurate or complete generative model. When we perform experiments on the brain, we're often interested in how specific parameters impact neural activity. An excellent example is the Allen Institute's Neuropixels Visual Coding Dataset. Six probes were placed in and around the primary visual area in mice, and you can see on the left that they penetrate to some deeper structures like the hippocampal formation and the thalamus. Each of these probes contains hundreds of recording channels, every one streaming a time series over a session that lasts for nearly three hours. During this session, the mouse is shown a battery of visual stimuli, from just a blank grey screen for measuring spontaneous activity, to gabbles, drifting gratings, and natural movies. We expect the dynamics of the brain to change between these visual stimuli. Now, how can we produce a natural, easy to interpret summary of this very high dimensional, non-stationary data? There are lots of ways to study non-stationarity in specific contexts. Dynamic functional connectivity is one example from neuroscience, but to calculate pairwise similarities, you need phase-aligned time series and you lose local information. What we have developed is a generic tool for taking any non-stationary time series and describing its time-varying dynamics in a low-dimensional feature space. What's nice about this feature space? You can see here that it takes a very complex time series and represents it as a trajectory over its different dynamical properties. From this trajectory, we can infer the variation of parameters underlying non-stationarity, as well as the impact they have on dynamics. Our method relies on embedding a time series in a feature space. A feature is a function of a time series that returns a single real-valued statistic. The statistic captures one dynamical property of the time series, maybe its standard deviation, its autocorrelation, or its maximal Lapinov exponent. Applying a set of features to a time series produces a feature vector, which can be thought of as one point in a space where each dimension is an interpretable dynamical property. We need to detect any change in dynamics that might occur in our time series, so we need a comprehensive feature set. We use a set of 22 features called CATCH22, distilled down from a much larger set of over 7,000 features called HCTSA. Now, how do we use a feature set to arrive at a compact representation of complex time series? First, we take a highly multivariate time series and we window it, resolving the non-stationary dynamics over time. Next, we apply feature extraction to each window, taking us from the temporal domain to a high dimensional feature space. Finally, we apply dimensionality reduction to our extracted feature values for a low dimensional representation of the core changes in dynamics. All right, we have this method for producing natural, intuitive descriptions of non-stationary time series. Now, we take the NeuroPixels data from the LFP band and apply our method to give an embedding like the one you see here. Each axis of this plot is a linear combination of time series features. Every point is one window in time from one channel of a NeuroPixels probe, coloured by the brain region they belong to. Over time, you see each channel moving through feature space. As the stimulus changes from natural movies to spontaneous, there's a strong pull towards the bottom right of this space, showing that as we change our parameter, the visual stimulus, we see a shift in neural dynamics, particularly in the visual cortex. This embedding gives us an easy way to ask a lot of interesting questions. What dynamics characterize channels in each brain region? Or how does each brain region respond to each visual stimulus? The first one we'll ask is, how unique are the dynamics of the visual cortex during different visual stimuli? To answer it, we fit a density estimate to the points in our feature space during each stimulus for a single channel from the primary visual area. Then we calculated a dissimilarity score, the Jensen-Shannon divergence, pairwise between each stimulus type. On the left you see the results. Each row and column is a stimulus, and each element is a dissimilarity between dynamical properties. We can clearly make out two clusters, these three low-contrast stimuli, spontaneous flashes and gabbles, 
and the remaining high contrast stimuli like gratings and movies. On the right is a similar figure, but for a channel in the lateral posterior nucleus of the thalamus. Here you can see that the discrimination between the dynamics induced by each stimulus really is most prominent for our first visual cortex channel. But the advantage of our method is that it allows us to be more specific about local dynamics. How exactly are neurons in the visual cortex behaving during these high contrast stimuli? On the left, I plotted the windows for the visual cortex channel in our low dimensional space during three representative stimuli. The distribution of the dynamics during the high contrast stimulus, gratings, is strikingly different from the dynamics during lower contrast stimuli like spontaneous and gabors. What's more, we can zoom in to understand each part of this feature space. Focusing on the vertical axis, you can see that the time series at the bottom left has fast, broadband, gamma-like fluctuations. However, a high PC2, which occurs during static gratings, indicates a very slow time series, theta-like, with a little nonlinearity in the disparity between sharp troughs and broad peaks. This is because the y-axis is weighted oppositely onto linear and nonlinear measures of time scale, meaning it discriminates nonlinear patterns as well as time scales with a fairly coarse grain. On the right is a similar plot but compares representative channels from three regions during static gradings. Our strikingly slow dynamics are unique to the visual cortex. In conclusion, we've developed a new tool for producing natural, interpretable summaries of non-stationary time series. Using our summaries, we directly infer the meaningful variation of parameters that can underlie non-stationarity in the brain. When we apply this method to the LFP bend of the neuropixels data, we can easily identify and characterize the unique dynamics of the primary visual area during high contrast stimuli. However, this has just been one case study. The same method can be applied to the spike band of neuropixels data, to EEG signals, fMRI recordings, any data set of non-stationary time series. Unlike other approaches to analyzing non-stationary neural data, uh, such as dynamic functional connectivity, our method is a convenient, natural, interpretable way to summarize local non-stationary dynamics, opening new avenues to understanding how the behavior of the brain is organized over time as well as space. All right. Thanks for listening, and also thanks to the Dynamics and Neural Systems Group at the University of Sydney, who I've been working with during this project. Feel free to ask any questions, contact me, or follow these links to check out some of the tools that I've been mentioning. Thanks.